Hi there, in this video, I'll complete the project, which was started in the previous video. During the project, some points related to CFC language, adding a new function to library and so on will be explained. In the next video, SFC language will be started. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's start the video. If you remember, in the previous video, this program was written to determine the state of the running mode variable, according to the start, stop and emergency buttons. It determines the sorting station must be in running mode or not. Now, I'm going to write a program to determine, when the entry conveyor must be started or stopped. Similarly, I need to use an output and then an RS instruction. Well, all conditions that can turn on the entry conveyor must be connected to the set pin of the second RS. For mine, there are two conditions. So, let me add an OR instruction, before the second RS. Well, the first condition is when the start push button is pressed. The second condition is when a product has been moved completely, when the sorting station is in running mode. So, let me add the running mode variable and the sensor, as two inputs to my program. Note that, these two inputs must be enabled, to start the entry conveyor. So, I need to implement an logic between them, and then use its result to start the entry conveyor automatically. As I've mentioned in the previous video, CFC languages is similar to function block diagrams. But in CFC language, it won't need to repeat inputs, inside each network. I can easily get a branch of any input, and connect it to inputs of other instructions. Also, instructions can be used everywhere. In CFC language, these numbers determine the order of execution. I can easily right click on each instruction, and change its order. For example, this option can be used to execute the instruction at the beginning of each scan cycle. Similarly, the second option can be used to execute the instruction, as the last one. Usually, I prefer to use this option, order by data flow. It usually makes the program is executed from the top and left side, to its right and bottom. Ok, let's continue the programming step. There are two conditions to reset the entry conveyor automatically, and I need to perform or logic between them. The first condition is, when the sorting station is not in running mode. So, let's connect the first pin of the inserted or logic, to the running mode variable, and of course, I need to invert its state. The second condition is, when a product has been passed from the vision sensor onto the second conveyor. This moment can be detected by the vision sensor. I need to compare its value with zero, and then use an R trick instruction, to produce a pulse to stop the entry conveyor.
OK, let me compile my program to ensure there isn't any error. Now, let's write a program to control the exit conveyor automatically. Similarly, I'll need an RS instruction, and also some logic gates, to determine all conditions that can start and stop the exit conveyor. Now, I'm going to determine the only condition that can turn on the exit conveyor. Well, the initial condition to turn on the exit conveyor is that, the running mode is enabled. After that, if the vision sensor detects a new product below itself, the exit conveyor must be enabled. Briefly, if the vision sensor is not equal to zero, it means a new product is below the vision sensor and must be moved by the exit conveyor. Note that, inputs can be repeated, if there are lots of branches, that make the program seems complex. For example, instead of these two branches, let me repeat these two inputs. Well, another way to decrease branches is using connection marks. I can right click on each line, and use this option. For now, this mark, RM, indicates these pins are connected to the running mode variable. Now, I need to specify the conditions that turn off the exit conveyor. Based on the previous video, after pressing the stop push button, the exit conveyor remained on 15 seconds. Therefore, I need an off delay timer. Alright, when the running mode is disabled, after 15 seconds, this instruction will produce a pulse, that can turn off the exit conveyor. But there are two more conditions. So, let me add an OR logic. Note that, the emergency button must turn off the exit conveyor immediately, not after 15 seconds. So, let me use that directly, to turn off the exit conveyor. Ok, let me sort my program a little. Now, let me add another pin to the last OR. Because there is another condition that can stop the exit conveyor. When this sensor detects a product, it means the exit conveyor has moved the product completely, and must be stopped until the next one. Note that, the state of this sensor is equal to 1 in normal conditions. So, I need to invert it, but not twice. So, please delete the second one. Note that, 
I found this problem after recording and testing the current project. Now, let's extend the program. I want to use the stop push button light to indicate the sorting station is in running mode. In other word, the running mode variable is enabled. I will use a function whose name is blink to create a blinker light. Well, this red line says, this function is not defined. I need to open library manager, and add the blink function. Alright, the blink function has been added to my program successfully. It produces pulses and can be used to create a blinker light. Now, you can connect the output of the blink function to the stop light, to use it as a blinker light. After testing the project, I found a small problem in the performance of the stop light, when the system exit from the running mode. To solve it, let me perform an logic, between the producing pulses by the blink function, and the running mode variable. Alright, this part of my program just create a blinker light, when the running mode variable is enabled. Try to analyze that. That's simple. Another important section in this project is related to these three arms. Let's create a new POU for them. Note that, I can use another language for the new POU. For example, I'll select structured text language. Alright, let's write a program to control the three arms. Note that, every time, I can press F2, to open this window. Now, I can find any variable, function or instruction, and then add it to my program. Well, I'm defining the running mode variable. Note that, it's a local variable inside the current POU, and its full name is different from the previous one, which was defined as a global variable, inside the GVL list. Also, I need an off delay timer. Because the three arms must remain on 15 seconds, when the running mode variable is disabled. Now, I'm going to write a program related to the first arm. If the system is in running mode plus 15 seconds, and the vision sensor has detected these two products, then the controller must turn on the two actuators of the first arm. Now, I'm going to determine the conditions, that can turn off the first arm. 
if 15 seconds has been elapsed after pressing the stop push button, or if the emergency button is pressed, or another product type has been detected by the vision sensor, the first arm must be turned off. Note that, all conditions that can turn on or off an output must be considered. Some of them are simple and obvious, like the emergency button. But some of them may be detected during the simulation step. For example, I've tested my program, and then, I've realized to add this part to my program. Well, all conditions that can turn on and off the first sorter arm, have been determined. The other arms work similarly. Therefore, let me copy and paste this part of my program twice, and then modify their variables. All right, the current POU, related to the sorter arms, must called beside the auto POU, when the automatic mode is selected. Now, let's create a new POU to use these three digital displays, to display how many products have been moved. I'll select FBD language to write its program. First, I need an up counter. Well, the first counter must be increased, when the vision sensor detects these two products. Now, let's use the reset push button to reset the counter value. Well, I've forgotten to define its variable inside the FIO list. But it's not matter. I can define it right now. Okay, the other two counters work similarly. So, I can copy and paste the first network twice, and then correct the variables. All right, this program must be called, like these three program organization units. Note that, the three counters should always work. So, its POU doesn't need any special condition, to start its work.
Now, let me show you another way to execute an POU directly. As you know, the controller start its work from this POU. Now, I want to add another POU. Now, here are two program organization units, which will be executed by the controller directly. Others will be called by the first POU. Note that, if I click here, I can change some settings such as the order between these two POU, or change its type, or activate watchdog ability, which will check the scan cycle time. Alright, the programming step has been finished. Now, I need to select variables, which must be shared with factory IO. If you remember, I've defined all of them as global variables, inside the FIO list, in the previous video. So, let me compile my project to ensure there isn't any error, and then add a symbol configuration. Alright, let me select all variables of the FIO list. Well, this message says three variables were not used in the program. That's true. In the program I've not used reset light, start light, and also the stop blade. Now, I need to make a connection between these variables, and the equipment inside factory IO, via an OPC server. The connection process has been explained several times during the previous videos. So, let's skip it. Note that, all other steps related to the sorting station, including testing the project, designing the system, and also the programming step have been explained in this and the previous video. In the next video, I'll start another project to learn SFC language. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.